Hi, I'm Dr. Bill White again, and I'm going to talk to you today some about retainers with bite plates and ramps. Now, we use uh, bite plates on virtually all of our uh, retainers when we finish, especially if they've got any kind of deep bite, and the bite might try to deepen again, so we put these uh, bite plates on them, and if they wear the retainer, they'll never deepen. Uh, again, the, the bite plate holds all the teeth in place. Uh, I am a, a member of the American Orthodontic Society. I'm board certified in that, but I am a general dentist. And I've been doing nothing but orthodontics and uh, some TMJ work uh, for the last 40 some odd years. Uh, anyway, I'm going to have this uh, short video here on how to put a ramp or a bite plate. They're both, uh, uh, if you have a bite plate, you can build a ramp on it to the hold of the jaw forward. And you do that in TMJ uh, cases. Got another picture here coming up. If you've got the TMJ cases, uh, we and you position somebody's jaw forward to relieve the TMJ problem that they've got then you really have to put a ramp on there to hold that jaw forward. And so sometimes we make these uh, people with TMJ problems that you've advanced their mandible, we'll put a, a, one retainer with a ramp that's high enough to where they can't get behind it with their jaw by pulling their jaw back or if they have to keep their jaw forward all the time. And they wear that at night. Now that kind of interferes with the speaking, and so we build another retainer for them with a very small ramp that they can talk with and everything, but reminds them to keep their jaw forward during the daytime. So it, we use those for uh, people with TMJ problems that you've had to bring their jaw forward and they've got to hold it forward. Now, if they'll hold it forward and you get the teeth interdigitated at that space and they keep it forward for years, then it'll finally remodel the joint in the back, the fossa and the condyle, remodel it and get to where they just stay out there. But it's uh, pretty hard to do and they have to stay with it for a long time before this remodeling. In other words, they can't go backwards and forwards. You know, chew back there and then come forward again later. It has to stay, stay in that place. So we wear that one at night. Now here we're going to show you how we do the ramp. We, You have the retainer finished with a wraparound <coughs> wire that goes around. Nothing goes over the occlusion. I want the teeth to erupt into each other and just wear in in that place. So we take a retainer that's been made and they've worn it for a while, and then we come in and mix a little cement and liquid. I mean, not cement, <laughs> it's acrylic and liquid. And you put a take your retainer and you can take a cotton roll and just put it in the retainer. Now you kind of rough up the bottom of the retainer here. Now you're going to put this soft acrylic, but you've got to be able to put it up there when you can kind of move it around. You don't want any of this uh, acrylic to get on the tissue side of the retainer. You want it the retainer that fits and is they've been wearing it for a while and it fits up in the mouth real good. And you want to put this this acrylic on that portion of the retainer right there. Now, uh, this is being made. They mix this uh, acrylic up and it's, it, it runs a little bit, but not much. It's got to be a certain consistency and the cotton kind of absorbs a little bit of the liquid and you put it on there with your spatula and it's gonna fill in this area right here. Uh, of the retainer. Now once uh, you get the material on the uh, front of the retainer, see, and you've 
held your thumb in there with this cotton and this begins to set a little bit none of this acrylic now has gone under to get on the tissue side of your retainer and making a bite plate is not a simple thing to do you have to do it right if you're going to make these bite plates now we take the cotton away and we've got this uh, this acrylic here that is still soft and we're going to insert this retainer into the person's mouth and make sure that the retainer is all the way up in the mouth so you put this in and you take your finger and you go in and you push it the retainer's got to be seated firmly and now you're going to take your finger and kind of mold this acrylic up around the teeth the anterior teeth and you'll have the person bite into this retainer but biting in is a take some you got to have a little sense about what you're doing here now that person has to be sitting in a normal head to shoulder relationship when they close their teeth if you close your teeth and move your head forward just a couple of inches your jaw will move forward if you move your head backward your your jaw will close backward you've got one place in here where your teeth close and that's where your head's in a normal head to shoulder relationship and that's where you bite because this is going to be where your teeth bite all the time now these teeth will come in contact and your lower anterior teeth are going to come in contact with this imprint that you're going to make into this soft acrylic and these teeth will be touching and these will be touching at the same time that uh, sounds simple when you first say this but uh, people frequently do not know how to make these bite plates where they're going to bite into them from then on you see now if you've got one you may make a ramp you have them bite into this and then they have to take their tongue and push this up against the you push it up against your bottom teeth and they come in so now this will set up with your back of the bottom teeth will be imprinted on this and you carve away part of it and leave a part of that ramp now for a normal one you just bite into it you don't worry about the tongue now we've taken the finger and move this up around where it's in contact with all these teeth and you just kind of move your finger around in here and press it against those teeth make darn sure now that the retainer is fully seated in the mouth when you do that now now we have the person bite together with their lower teeth we've still got the lower teeth in braces we've taken the upper out they've worn the retainer for a week or two or so till it gets fully seated before you put the bite plate on there and now they bite too but you've got them setting up if not just dead straight but kind of how they sit all the time and where they keep their head in relation to their shoulders and you close into that and now the back teeth are all in contact back here and all these front teeth are in contact with that acrylic and it you wait till it pretty near hardens I mean it's fairly hard when you take it out you don't want to let it get too hard and have something in there where it hooks and stays in so just as it's fairly hard it's not going to change any then you open a little bit and then you may close back again in that position and then you get it just fully hard before you take it out completely now we'll have a track in here this is all these teeth were in contact and your front teeth are contacting up here and if you do this on a deep bite case you, you let the case go till you you've got enough overjet and overbite is proper and then you make this and if they stay with that retainer that bite relation will stay like that from then on you know if they leave it out for a day or two they 
lower teeth might over erupt a little but if they put it back in and wear it all the time for a little bit a day or so anyway they will go back down and these teeth will come back in contact if you leave it out and your lower teeth over erupt then these teeth won't come in contact properly and that's the way you tell so if you got a TMJ problem you don't want to let do this because you're putting the weight right here on the jaw and then it's it's back on the condyles so the weight goes from the condyles to this and uh, while you take these out of occlusion in just a short time they come back into occlusion the side teeth come back into occlusion there's a lot to retention that most people don't know about most people don't pay any attention to it and that's why we got a lot of TMJ problems too with that. Now here the uh, bite plate is in here. Now if you don't have any TMJ problem you can trim this off all the way up where you've just got the imprint of these teeth in here. And this also holds your lower anterior teeth in position. But I still like to use a 3 to 3 uh, lower retainer on the cases. Uh, so now this is one where we don't have any uh, TMJ or we're not trying to hold the jaw forward it just closes right in here and this will keep this as long as they use this retainer this will stay and keep it in there now my objective when doing orthodontics is to get the person looking as good as you possibly can and then just retain the heck out of it and uh, let them know I mean that uh, they have to wear these retainers now some people you haven't solved the problem retention is a real problem there uh, if you you need to get at what caused the malocclusion to start with and get rid of that cause and then your retention problem is not all that great but this is a ramp now or this is a bite plate without the ramp and the ramp would be something a lot more like we'd have a, a deal on a retainer would come down like this and it'd come way up in here see where they'd be biting so in their lower jaw they have to they have to get their jaw up here to bite together so you make a big ramp on one that's on these bad TMJ cases you, you had to advance their mandible a lot now we've got some cases showing that where we took these people and advanced their mandibles and kept them there for years and they got to where they just couldn't go back and if they stay there you'll get remodeling of the condyle the fossil but if they take it out and chew back like they normally do and then chew forward it won't ever go back but it, it will if you stay there and chew there and some people look so much better with their jaw brought forward until they try to stay with that now this is the person that got the mouth open now when they bite together the lower end of your teeth will fit right in underneath that and you'll have the same overjet and overbite as long as you stay with that. So hope you'll uh, uh, learn how to do this if you don't know how. And uh, uh, I appreciate being able to show you this and let you do it. If you've got patients that have joint problems, this is an important thing to learn for sure. Or any of the deep bite, if you don't put something under it, they see they're going to go up till they run into something. So, hope you stay with it. So, I think this is the last uh, video on this. I'm going to close out now.